Hi, and thank you for tuning in to a new episode about Japanese FDF, uh, Uniforms Unique Airsoft. I want to thank a few people for providing me with new information about the Japanese Type 64 and the Type 89 Assault Rifle. I put those information to good use uh, as possible, so I could put, uh, make a new video like this. Thanks to you, uh, your effort, I can make more videos uh, about the Japanese Armed Forces. If you have self an uh, idea of a subject that you want to see in my uh, videos, Please let me know in the comment section down below. If someone has more information about, for example, why the Japanese were in the Iraq uh, war, for example, what were the restrictions at, what is the constitution uh, so important. Even with my knowledge, I do not have all the information that I have. So please let me know in the comment section down below if you have any information about it or if any ID for uh, making a new video. I will try to make a video each month. I will try to make a video each month. But unfortunately, because of the coronavirus, more than 90% of my projects are uh, on hold at the moment. When the coronavirus is more under control uh, this year, I hope uh, around uh, June this year, I can provide more than 90% again with new subjects uh, for my video channel with airsoft uniforms. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you think and help me uh, to support this channel any way is possible that you can. So without further ado, let's start. In 1964, the Type uh, 64 was uh, introduced by the Japanese Armed Forces. Japan had a total uh, manpower around 125 to 150,000 uh, men and women strong in the all branches, land, sea and air. But most concentrated forces was on uh, ground forces because um, there were still many restrictions because of the constitution, because of wartime, World War II uh, is still in my, many people in their minds, they want to have only a self-defense force and do not have one to repeat World War II uh, what they have done. The Japanese uh, did examine the M14 and some other inspiration uh, from West Germany, uh, for example, with the G3, and they decided to make those two uh, together they put uh, the iron sights uh, from the M14 on the Type 64 and the selector switch from the roller coaster weapon. But the whole design is almost similarity to the type uh, of, or I mean, the G3 uh, rifle from Germany itself. The standardization uh, around the Type 64 is 20 rounds, semi and full automatic. But the 7.62 uh, cartridge used by the Japanese, uh, also used by the Americans and NATO, Type 64 uh, cartridge, is 10% less power compared to uh, the Sef, uh, compared to uh, the M14 card. They want to have much uh, firepower as possible if the Soviet Union would attack Hokkaido. Hokkaido uh, is up all the way up north. It has not many population around 5 million uh, in 2007. So I think around 3 million people lived lived of living in Hokkaido up north. It is highly dense, uh, populated with forests, mountains. So most uh, cities and villages are at the coast uh, line. So that was the most obvious route for the Soviet Union to invade the whole way to south or through Japan. So if Japan was uh, would be attacked by the Ameri by the Soviet Union, the 7.62 uh, cartridge from the Type C4 will have you great use. The Japanese concentrated their doctrine around the defense. So give uh, much uh, room for them to fall back to each position when, until the reinforcements from the Americans uh, come to aid Japan. From 1964 all the way to 2005, Japan was only using iron sights. Railscope uh, system was only given by specialized uh, units and not given by the regular infantry units. So the 7.6 steel with the less uh, power in the cartridge will have a great effective range uh, around 400 meters compared to 600 to or 800 meters uh, that the Americans, uh, especially ones that went one shot, one kill. But the Americans quickly ditch their uh, 7.6 steel uh, ID in the Vietnam uh, War, and the rest of or and the rest of the world was stuck with the 7.62. This is the next video what I'm going to uh, make about the cartridges. When the Japanese soldier is defending a high ridge overlooking a road or a river, they are easily to cross uh, when a whole unit, uh, when a unit from uh, the Soviet Union is passing through, they can fire tremendously uh, with their weapons. The Japanese with the 7.62 have an effective range, what I like said, 3 to 500 meters uh, efficiently. Of course, it will be less uh, powerful uh, impact, 
but it will still be have an efficient effect compared to the AK-47. The AK-47 has an effective range of 400 meters, but it has uh, not the accuracy compared to the other weapons like the Dragonal sniper rifle or the light machine guns from the Russians. That was the most concentrated weapon of marksmanship to suppress the enemy from a farther distance. The AKs were more for the human wave uh, assault tactics. So if uh, the Japanese will be uh, would be attacked by uh, the Russian forces through Hokkaido, the defense line operation will be much more simplified, with each line of defense try to fall back to prevent an encirclement. But the downside is with a long rifle like the Type 64, the combat uh, in close quarters combat like in cities and villages will have less efficient compared to the AK-47. The AK-47 is more more used for close quarters combat compared to the Type 64. In 1989, the Japanese uh, upgraded their inventory to the Japanese assault rifle and replaced the 7.62 as a frontline uh, cartridge to the 5.56 NATO. But the Americans were continually upgrading their weapons from the EPS M16 family to an M4 carbine to scope rail mount systems and the modernization to everything that you can think of to modernize your weapon. But the Japanese were slow to react and at the same time they didn't want to uh, invest the money into it because of the constitution. But that slowly changed when the Japanese uh, expeditionary force that were sent to Iraq in 2003 returned with their experience. They decided to invest more and more money into upgrading their weapons. But the only upgrade that they will see is a real uh, system on the mount scope and the endoscope system itself. More and more units will provide to have more of uh, their weapon self. But the majority of the first uh, majority uh, of the soldiers will still have the Type 64 for the first uh, five or ten years. But slowly that will change for the Type 89 standard frontline weapon, and the Type 64 will uh, be only used for uh, rear guard units, logistic and marksmanship. The Type 89 will only use for frontline service for paratroopers, reconnaissance, tank crewmen. And the selector switch, for example, is, is almost the same as for the Type 64, but the only difference is it has three round bursts attached to it, and also on the left side for it for quick responses if you are under fire in an ambush, for example. But in 2020, the Japanese uh, finally received the new assault rifles called the Type 20 uh, full uh, semi and full automatic rifle. This time, it has not a roller coaster uh, selector switch like you see on the 64 and 89. This time it has an M16 selector switch. But this weapon also can put now and also a grenade launcher. That was a little bit uh, that uh, thing that the Japanese uh, didn't thought of back in those days. But Japan was think about self-defense, so a self-defense force doctrine. So Japan is still modernization efforts are still continuing, but a little bit more slower compared to uh, China, for example. Under pre former Prime Minister Ed, former Prime Minister Abe, the constitution was slowly changing in the last 10 years. Before he retired because of health issues, he wanted to uh, ask the people of uh, Japan to, in a referendum, about the constitution, yes or no, that going back to a sort of an imperial army again, so that Japan could defend itself with uh, their allies. Who knows what will happen in the near future? So I do hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, video. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the Type 64 and the Type 89 uh, efficiency. Even the Type 64 have never seen combat uh, performance uh, anywhere. It had some breakages of course, but every uh, developing weapon in the beginning has that issue. The M4, M16, we have seen that in the Vietnam uh, War for example, the L85 uh, from the United Kingdom uh, have some major issues. Every developing program with an, uh, each weapon must be updated every time when there is an issue. Not to lay low and hope that it will go away when they are not looking. So I do hope uh, that more and more people will uh, appreciate the Type 89 and the Type 64 uh, rifles. And, you, and if you want more in information about it, you can also go and look up for yourself and see more information about it. But the upcoming uh, upcoming uh, time I'm going to make more and more videos in time to time. So I do hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.